we're really sorry, but we lied to you. A couple of years ago, we told you that it wasn't possible to recycle crisp packets. Whereas things like fruit packaging and crisp bags are unfortunately no good. Since that video, some of you have mentioned that not only is it possible, but crisp packets might even have some life-saving properties. So we thought it was time to give the crisp packets a chance and hopefully right that wrong. Before we actually... <laughs> Never heard you go that high in my life. <laughs> Fifteen-year-old me came out there for a second. <laughs> Before we crack on and actually see if this is going to work or not, I want to address the elephant of the video, the classic saying, <laughs> of the fact that the video title probably says something like chip bags or chip packets. Yes. Whereas we are now referring to them as crisp packets. Yeah, I'm afraid we kind of have to play to the YouTube algorithm here. Most of our audience is American. Thank you very much, lovely Americans, Hello, Americans. for watching all of our videos. For the title of the video, we are calling it a chip packet, a chip bag, but I think from this point forward, we will be saying crisp packet because it's a little bit more natural for us, but we all know we're on the same page. Either way, whatever we say, crisp packet, chip packet, potato, potato, so it's all the same. <laughs> it was really spontaneous the first time. We thought it was really clever, but that's the third take, but good joke. So crisp packets are traditionally very difficult to recycle because if you open them up, they've got this foil, keep it fresh lining on the inside, which is fantastic for your lovely, lovely fresh crisp. crisp. So that means it's very difficult to recycle these because you've got the foil on the inside, the plastic on the outside. It's impossible to separate those two, so they aren't accepted by recycling centers and therefore they end up in landfill or floating around in the ocean, I guess. So in some of our other videos, we've used just an everyday iron and some baking paper to fuse together single-use plastic bags. So we think that technique could work for these crisp packets. The only issue might be with the foil lining and it might cause a problem when it comes to fusing them together. So we're gonna have a quick test on a couple of packets to see if it works. Now we're partial to a packet of crisps ourselves for lunch every now and again, but we knew that if we could actually make this work and we wanted to make anything of a decent size, we were gonna need quite a lot of crisp packets. So we roped in all our family and friends over the Christmas period and we managed to get all of these. These are gonna be pretty greasy inside, so we're gonna give them a quick rinse before we see if this works. Hmm, look at that, extra lunch. So cut them down the side, open up the ends, and then I've just got a rag with some soapy water on. Clean that all off. Definitely gonna need a better system for cleaning these if we do this en masse. There you go. So just overlapping them slightly, adding some baking paper, and then see if we can get them to fuse. <laughs> Look at that. Wow, that's great. That actually works really well. Should do a couple more. Sure. Trying to keep it roughly straight. It fuses a lot quicker than the plastic bags do. Overlap, paper. One, two, three. I reckon three is probably enough. Right, so now we know that works, which is wonderful news. We now just need to work out what to make with it. So we took a look around online and we quickly stumbled across the very appropriately named Crisp Packet Project. Looking at their website, it's clear they're doing some amazing work reusing crisp packets to make life-saving items, which are then given to people living on the streets or to those living through wars and natural disasters. So we reached out to Penn, who is their founder, who was absolutely lovely and was very happy to jump on a Zoom call. And now we did have absolutely every intention of recording this so that we could share some of her infinite wisdom and knowledge with you. But unfortunately, I was lacking in the wisdom and knowledge to remember to press record. So unfortunately, you're just gonna have to take our word for it that she was lovely. She told us all about the crisp packet project and gave us some really cool ideas as well as some really handy tips on working with crisp packets. We'll link their website down below so you can take a look for yourselves because they've got diagrams showing you how to make a bunch of different things. The idea that really caught our eye was to make something like a bivy bag or a sleeping bag as we've got loads of crisp packets to use up. Now they do have a diagram which shows us exactly how to make one of these, but we thought to keep things a bit more exciting, we just try and work this out ourselves as we go. So now that we've got our idea, it's time to prepare the rest of those crisp packets so that they hopefully resemble something a bit like a sleeping bag. 
When you think about it, it's kind of crazy that this material is thrown away at all because the built-in foil lining has potential to act as a heat reflector to keep things warm or to reflect heat away and keep things cool. The Chris Packet Project make loads of different items that take advantage of this, like emergency blankets and sleeping bags, but also things like radiator reflectors that you can slot behind your radiator to help keep the heat in your house and reduce your energy bills in winter. Okay, so while they're all hanging out to dry, here's our plan to how we're gonna make the sleeping bag. We're gonna take five crisp packets, iron them together side by side, and that will be the width of the bag. We'll then take 16 of those strips and iron them together. This will give us a sheet which is long enough for us to lay down it. We'll then do this twice, so we've got a front and a back for our sleeping bag, put them together, foil side in, and once we've sealed all our edges together, we will have our sleeping bag. And yes, essentially, we have turned lots of little crisp packets into one giant crisp packet. Once they were all dry, we sorted them roughly into size so that we could make rows using packets that were about the same height. When we spoke to Penn, she did suggest avoiding ones that felt much thicker as these don't fuse quite as well. So this included most of the larger packets. So we chucked them in a separate box to use for another project. I know we've just decided on a sleeping bag. Yeah. But I had another idea of something we could have made. You know those little hats that people wear and they make have like tin foil to stop people reading your mind. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, those. Crisp packets, foil lining, like it would work great. Why do you think anyone would want to read your mind? It's like, like passwords, bank details, credit card <laughs> number. Loads, I've got lots of important stuff up here. I think as much as I would love to see you walking around permanently with a tin foil hat on your head, <laughs> on this occasion, that won't be necessary. So whether you're just flicking around on your phone looking for some fun new recycling solutions or you're just flicking through your emails, NordVPN can keep you safe in a whole bunch of ways while you're online. A while back we got a call from someone who claimed to be our bank and they said we needed to decline a payment because it looked suspicious. They emailed us a login link and it all felt really dodgy so we told them to do one, contacted our real bank and they said yes, they were definitely trying to scam us. But if we hadn't noticed it, things could definitely have been a lot worse. If we'd had NordVPN at the time, their threat protection feature could recognise malicious links and warn us even before we clicked on it. So after a long old day of fighting off scammers and ironing some plastic, there is nothing more that we love than just kicking back with some Netflix and eating a packet of crisps. Don't worry, we can recycle them now. NordVPN lets you choose from a huge selection of countries, so if there's a particular film or series that you're desperate to see, but it isn't available where you live, then NordVPN's got your back. This is also just really handy when you're traveling, as it means you don't have to miss out on your weekly TV binge from back home. So if you're interested, click the link down in the description to get a special offer, including four additional months and a 30-day money-back guarantee. And not only that, but it's also NordVPN's birthday. So right, so right now, you'll also be getting access to a special little gift on them to celebrate. Lovely. Big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and happy birthday. I see you went ahead and made the hat. You can never be too careful. And it's now a birthday hat too. I hate it. Come on, I need to do. Uh -huh. So I'm genuinely not just saying this, but I'm actually having a very pleasant time doing this. It's quite a relaxing process. Quite therapeutic, isn't it? Exactly. But we only have one iron and there is two of us, so I have a very bored brother next to me. And about 400 crisp packets to try and turn into something. <laughs> so I've had an idea and I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I'll give you something to do at least. We've got one of these like heat sealer vacuum-y things. I think it's for keeping food fresh. Yeah, for bag sealing, I, isn't it? Yeah, I can't remember why we've got it, but it might work for this. And if it doesn't, then at least I've killed 10 minutes. <laughs> So the plan is somewhere, I'm gonna put the heat somewhere, I, I sorry, literally in the middle. And then when you push this down, the light comes on. Can you hear that? There you go, the little heat element turns on. And then hopefully that will seal the bags together. The only problem I can see is that you're gonna need three hands, one to hold these together. Oh, actually, hold on. Oh, <laughs> hey, I think you've got a job. I've got a job. That works really well. The only awkward bit is like trying to hold two crisp packets together and then push it down. I suppose I could <laughs> do it with my head, but I've got a better idea. All right, test one. Hands-free mode. Works. <laughs> Should 
do we have a red? Pink versus red. This is traditionally how you start crisp wars. Hands up. Three, two, one, crisp. Oh no, my first one didn't steal. Yes. Gotta give it a little extra push. No way. Exactly round one. That's the three. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, crisp. Should we give it a decider? What do you mean a decider? Because I want 2-0. It. Want... it actually makes this really fun. It does, yeah. Do you want to count down here? That helps. All right, three, two, one, crisp. Well, it's so close. <laughs> but the traditional methods just take it, I think. <laughs> to be honest, I think my rows are going to be quite wonky because I was quite <laughs> stressed and rushing. But we'll, we'll go slower now, but they both work well. This is 16 of those strips of five, all ironed together, which makes 80 crisp packets. Now, this is a fairly good size for us to kind of lay down and be able to kind of get inside when this is together, but we're gonna make a second one and put it all in a big wrap. Now, this is relatively strong, but because crisp packets are the type of plastic that tears rather than stretches, it would rip, I think, if you put too much force against it. There are some little holes here and there. So what the crisp packet project does to make it as strong as possible is they wrap the whole thing in like a clear film plastic and then iron all that together and that makes it super tough and durable. Like the true hoarders we are, we don't throw anything away. So we've got some of these knocking about, which are from old mattresses. Oh, I might need your help here, Matt. Oy. Right, this genuinely wasn't intentional, but that has worked perfectly. Now, if you haven't got as lucky as we have and got a bit of plastic that's exactly the right size for what you need, then the team over at the Crisp Packet Project say that they always get their plastic sheeting from places that sell sofas because that's always what the sofas get delivered in and they just get thrown away otherwise. And although these are covered with words like biodegradable and little recycling logos, they're actually really tricky to recycle. So it's great to be able to give them a nice second life. Once we'd fused the big plastic sheeting to our crisp packets on both the front and the back, we were essentially left with one big survival blanket. Now, of course, you could just leave it here, but as we're making a sleeping bag, we went ahead and made a second. We laid the two sheets side by side and ironed them together along one edge, which left us with this giant sheet, which we then folded into a kind of tunnel shape so that we could join the other sides together. Once we'd managed to tie them out after a very safe blindfolded run around the workshop, we ironed the excess plastic sheeting together and then folded it over and ironed it once more to make sure it was nice and sturdy. The last thing we had to do was just to make a few holes in the top layer of the sleeping bag just to allow any moisture to escape and then we were ready to wriggle on in. Is it? Considering it's winter and I'm on a workshop floor, this is the warmest I've been in this workshop for a long time. 
I'm genuinely really quite surprised that it worked that well, to be honest. For a load of crisp packets ironed together and yeah. covered in plastic, it's, yeah, it works great. And it's really nice because of the size of it, it can work well as a bivy bag, so you can get in your sleeping bag and get inside, and then yeah. it's really toasty. Or if it was a bit warm outside, you could just use it without the sleeping bag and use it more as like a waterproof cover. On the other side of this, we are taking two difficult to recycle materials and then permanently fusing them together. And anytime you do that, it means that those can't be separated for future recycling. It'd be really interesting to hear your thoughts on this. From our perspective, we think this is overall quite positive. You're taking a material which is probably never gonna get recycled and you're turning it into something that can be really useful for people. And it's kind of infinitely repairable with a very simple method. If you are interested in getting involved yourself, then we have got a bunch of different ways that you can do so. If you can get your hands on enough crisp packets yourself, then have a go using the techniques we've shown you, and then maybe contact a local church or a local charity and see if they can help you get them to the people that need them. If you're UK based, you can help out Penn and her team. So they're currently inundated with crisp packets, but they are looking for rows and grids. So a row is four packets yep. and a grid. 16 packets. Yeah, a little bit like we made earlier in the video. So if you can send them directly to them, we'll pop the address in the description below. And if you're super keen and passionate about recycling crisp packets you could even set up your own crisp packet projects there's loads all over the world just contact the owners on facebook and they can help you get started so thank you so much for watching the video and a massive thank you goes out to Penn and her team for being incredibly amazing helping us out a lot and doing the amazing work they're doing and of course we can't end the video without saying thank you so much to our wonderful brotherhood over on patreon these guys help us keep the workshop lights on and recycling more plastic legends thank you so much gang we'll see you on the next one we both did a we both did that did we yeah Oh, oh, salute. That'll do. I think this means that crisps are now tax deductible for us. I'm going to Google it.